Well, Ministers, let me say on behalf of the Business Council and the business community how delighted we are to be here for these announcements today, so thank you for the invitation. Uh, Professor Samuel's review was a wake-up to all Australians. Uh, the system that we have today for environmental planning and for um, development progress is broken. It's not working for today and it's not working and won't work tomorrow. In terms of business, it is too expensive, it is too uncertain and it takes too long to get complying developments off the ground. Ultimately what that means is that it drives up the cost to all Australians, the cost of their home, the cost of electricity, the cost of almost every good that we have in our society. And that jobs, critical jobs, great jobs, high paying jobs are delayed, are deferred and ultimately aren't created. But this system isn't a system that's working for one part of the community at the expense of other. It's actually failing everyone. Because while businesses can't get these investments off the ground, the environment is unsustainably going backwards. And thus, not only is it not working for today, but it's not working for tomorrow. Because the thought that we can have economic prosperity going into the future that is separate from a stable, reliable, thriving environment just doesn't make sense. And the important thing that Professor Samuel said is that we can't think about one or the other, that we have to think about both. We have to think about protecting biodiversity, we have to think about strengthening the environment while also creating an environment where business can get on, can create jobs and can get investing underway. And so, Minister, we're delighted that so quickly into your term you've responded so positively to Professor Samuel's review. As the Minister said, that has involved collaboration across all groups in the community, and I know that there have been a number of business groups, not just the Business Council, that the Minister has engaged with in this process. Today's announcement of national environmental standards that will achieve certainty for business and improved environmental outcomes underpin what will be improvements across the entire system. Regional planning is at the core, and Minister Scanlon spoke about that a moment ago. The importance of regional planning is that it does enable development to take place in ensuring that it complies with the unique biodiversity of a specific region of our nation, while also ensuring that that biodiversity is um, continuing to improve, that the health of the environment in that local region moves forward. An EPA which balances environmental, social and economic outcomes. We cannot have one progressing at the expense of the other. What today's announcement says is that we're going to move forward ensuring that we gain on all fronts. Um, and Minister, perhaps I'll just conclude by underscoring your comments. Um, I'm sure there will be, as we move from here forward to legislation, areas of disagreement, but it gives us great heart that we're able to work together and collaborate and work through those as we move forward. Thank you, everyone. G'day. Um, Australia's, Australia's environmental law is um, busted and mistrusted. Our national environmental laws are failing to protect our wildlife and the habitats they depend on. The Australian Conservation Foundation welcomes the Minister's commitment to implement uh, a new National Environment Protection Agency, the first in this country's history, and to strengthen our national um, environmental standards to establish new standards that will drive uh, this law forward to protecting the environment. Having a minister uh, willing to fix a broken system is a great thing and we are appreciative of that um, endeavour. Uh, with national environmental standards, we need to see those standards incorporating all sectors, including the native forest logging sector. For too many years that sector has been excluded from national environmental laws at great expense to species in some of the world's greatest forests. We are disappointed that we don't see today um, reflect, reflected today 
uh, a climate trigger in what's proposed. A climate trigger would assess the damage that's being done by burning coal and gas on the amazing places of Australia, from the Great Barrier Reef to, in the east, to the Ningaloo Reef in the west, to the seagrass meadows in the south, and to the wetlands of the north. There's a heap more detail to work through over the next six months. We're really excited and optimistic that together with the Minister and stakeholders like the BCA, that we can work together to create a strong, positive national environmental law, the best that this country has ever had. The test of success of that law is going to be the degree to which it can stop the extinction of species like the amazing koala or the black cockatoo. Thank you. Okay, uh, now, um, if you've got any questions for me, we'll ask them first, and then I'm sure uh, the State Minister, Megan Scanlon, will be delighted to answer questions as well, and our special guests as well, if you've got questions for them. So, any questions for me? Uh, well, the EPA um, will be established as an independent organisation with a statutory appointed chair. It'll have its own budget. Uh, it'll be um, responsible for both uh, assessing and approving development applications, uh, and it will also be responsible for making sure that any conditions are implemented. It'll have a number of other responsibilities um, that are currently undertaken by the Department of the Environment. Uh, and uh, of course, um, one of the reasons that we're establishing it in this way is to make sure that it is transparent, that it is answerable to our democracy, that people can see the decisions that are being made and why they're being made and how they're being made and can have confidence that there is integrity in the system. The, the details of the design are, again, um, something that we'll continue to work through with stakeholders uh, over coming months, but this is an exciting, this is an exciting um, Australia first, and it, it delivers on an important, uh, an important promise that we made during the election to have a strong, independent EPA, uh, a tough cop on the beat, um, that is operating uh, at arm's length from government. So, the document talks of um, you know, a package of new national legislation being prepared in the first six months of 2023 uh, and uh, introduced before the end of that year with consultation in between. Um, could you, I guess, walk us through a timeline for uh, you know, what we can see through 2023? Sure. Uh, well, the government's response to Professor Graham Samuel's review today is the first step. What this response will tell you is our disposition on a number of recommendations that Professor Samuel has made. Uh, the next stage is to go into a more detailed design process, designing the legislation, uh, designing the, um, the in, uh, national environmental standards. So there'll be a number of national environmental standards on matters of national environmental significance, on consultation with First Nations people, on community consultation, uh, on offsets, uh, on regional planning. Um, and these national environmental standards will work side by side with legislation. We'd expect the first national environmental standards to be released at the same time uh, or around the same time as an exposure draft of the legislation. Now, I, I need to be clear, this is large, complex, consequential work. We will do it methodically, we'll do it in the way that we've been working collaboratively up till now with environmental organisations and business organisations. Uh, as I keep saying, uh, up till now it's taken uh, compromise, uh, it's taken um, cooperation, and it takes a lot of common sense too. And that's how we'll be proceeding next year. Minister, sure. Professor Sanders did recommend a climate trigger in part because the Union Coalition would support one. Do you think people will accept the way that we have the environmental laws that doesn't factor in the impact of climate change? Well, I'm so proud to be part of a government that as one of its first acts, actually legislated stronger carbon pollution reduction targets. So we have a, a legislated path to net zero emissions. What we're not going to do is have two separate systems for assessing carbon pollution emission from projects. 
Um, uh, what Professor Graham Samuel has recommended is transparency around the lifetime emissions from projects at a domestic level, and we'll be doing that. So uh, in the lingo, scope one and two emissions from projects will be transparently disclosed. Uh, and uh, of course, um, uh, very large projects will have to fit into the safeguards mechanism that my colleague Chris Bowen is currently uh, finalising uh, with uh, business and uh, other stakeholders. Minister, you One at a time. Yeah. Uh, well, that's something that we'll be working through very closely with stakeholders, uh, with the forestry industry and environmental organisations. We, we want to have a forestry industry here in Australia. We want a strong and sustainable forestry industry, both because we need the products that are produced and because we need the jobs as well. And, but we also know that uh, we have some um, critical areas uh, where there are threatened species and working cooperatively, collaboratively, I'm sure that we can come uh, to a common sense understanding of how we have a strong forestry industry and we better protect our environment. But that's something that we'll work very closely with the industry on. The Commission Environmental Standards, are they, I imagine they vary depending on the species of national significance. Are they like a, a number per hectare or are they? You, you've gone straight to the detail and uh, my, my very clear message today is that the government's response to the Samuel Review is a first step. And when um, any interested party reads this report, our response to Professor Graham Samuel's review, they'll be able to see the direction that we're heading. But for matters like, you know, species per hectare and so on, we're a long way down the track. And these are things that will be negotiated over time. We'll release a draft of the legislation. People will be able to comment on the draft legislation. We'll be able to comment on national environmental standards. Uh, and um, uh, and I, I think uh, this approach of slow, methodical, transparent engagement with all of our stakeholders is really important to try and keep the incredible consensus that we've had up till now. now of course, environmental groups and business groups don't agree on every detail of uh, Graham Samuel's review. But what we've had is uh, this remarkable willingness and desire to work together why? Because what exists now isn't working. Our environmental laws are broken. They don't work for business. They don't protect the environment. What we're seeking is a win-win, a win for the environment, a win for business, uh, because we want the jobs that these new developments will bring. And uh, getting there is going to take a lot of patience. It's going to take a lot of patience and a lot of negotiation, but I think we're up for it. Does it just include uh, amendments to the planning legislation in each state as well? Uh, we're working uh, very cooperatively with states. I've had great, a great meeting with state environmental uh, ministers. Um, states are interested in a regional planning approach, um, but we're not talking about diving into states' planning regimes. Are you aware that in Queensland there's a private block of area scheme where, for example... I'm not going to be commenting on individual states' planning mechanisms right. today. Yeah. I'm sure it happens in other states as well. Yeah. State governments set up planning provisions for large developments and the environment ministers can't challenge clearing in those areas. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to talk about states' planning regimes today. Uh, I'm going that? to... I'm going to... Yes. Um, well, we'll be working. Uh, we'll be working with uh, all of our scientists and experts, and of course, um, national environmental standards will be consulted on uh, very broadly. Can I say one of the other really important recommendations that Professor Samuel um, highlights is a real failure in the data capacity of our environmental um, planning system at the moment. Well, we know that for each project, most proponents are starting from scratch uh, to get the information together that says, yes, this is um, a development that can go ahead, it's not going to have significant impacts. That takes ages. To get the information that says this development shouldn't go ahead because there are threatened species here or some other unacceptable environmental in impact can take even longer. 
if we're talking about, just take for example, renewable energy projects, we want to see more renewable energy in Australia. That's a great contribution we can make to reducing the impact of climate change. We're talking about projects taking 600, 700 days um, to be assessed. We want to see faster, clearer decision making because of the jobs it brings, because people need homes to live in, because we need to be building more renewable energy projects and linking them into the grid so people can get cheaper, cleaner energy to their homes and businesses. We want roads to drive on and, and you know trains to catch. D sustainable development is absolutely necessary for this country. We want to see it, but we also need to better protect an environment. We have become the extinction capital of the globe in Australia. We are not doing well enough to protect our environment. The reason we've seen so much collaboration between environmental groups and business groups uh, with Professor Samuel and uh, with our government uh, is because it's not working for anyone. We need to make it work for everyone. Minister, you spoke about compromise. The ag sector has already raised their concerns that they'll be the ones compromising the most. What assurances will you give to that sector? I, I'm not sure that I heard the question properly. Did you say the ag sector? Farmers? Yes. Yeah. Well, of course, as well as environment and business groups, we've had great engagement with the National Farmers Federation uh, and, uh, and uh, other representatives of agricultural industries. Um, we, are absolutely deter you know, we are absolutely determined that Australia will continue to be a wealthy and productive country that's exporting our goods uh, all around the world. And, and that's what you know, that's what keeps us prosperous. I know farmers are some of the best environmental custodians in our country and I'm very hopeful that uh, not only will farmers um, welcome the detail of these proposals, which will give them certainty as well, um, but they will also be excited about the new opportunities of our nature repair market. Our nature repair market is a way for people uh, in regional communities and rural areas to earn money from doing the environmental stewardship that they want to do, in many cases, are desperate to do. This will apply for farmers, it will apply for First Nations, traditional owners, uh, um, First Nations people who are managing Indigenous protected areas. Um, this is a great new opportunity for, uh, for seeing investment in our regional and rural communities. The document says you're going to accredit state school approvals. Can you tell us what role that Absolutely. So states and territories that want to be accredited to do approvals will have to meet the same high standards uh, that the Commonwealth would meet. And the EPA would um, be uh, involved in the accreditation, but also uh, in case a state um, failed to meet up to those, uh, meet those high standards, an EPA would be able to recommend a withdrawal of the state's accreditation. Now, can I say accreditation was one of the recommendations of Professor Graham Samuel. We're very happy to work in partnership with states and territories on accreditation, but this is not something, uh, as the previous government tried to do, that we would even consider ramming through on its own. We need to wrap the time here news. Yep, we, and we might, you yep. might have some questions for the State Minister. So yep. thank you all very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so these bioregional plans have been working with the federal government both uh, in terms of the EPBC process but also all of our laws to really look at the cumulative impact of that development and work out what areas need protection, so effectively no-go zones, uh, what areas need to be restored and what areas would we approve sustainable <coughs> development. So it's about speeding up those processes, giving confidence to industry but also making sure we don't compromise biodiversity. So one of these areas will be uh, in South East Queensland to deal with uh, urban development. We of course, we know that we have many people moving to the state and we need to be able to house those people, but we also need to make sure we protect that biodiversity. Uh, so we'll be working through the detail of that, but uh, as I said, there's three key criteria that we're working towards under that traffic light system, and we'll have more to say on that soon, but this is about making sure we work in partnership on those uh, on that proposal right now. Yeah, do you feel satisfied as environmentalists that you cannot get to the private development areas? 
Uh, so in terms of priority development areas, they need to go through the EDQ process where they do need to uh, address particular environmental criteria. Uh, we also have a whole range of other criteria that developments need to go through. They also sometimes need to go through the EPBC process and as has been mentioned today, uh, that system is clearly not working to the standard in which Queenslanders and Australians would like to see. So we acknowledge there's work to be done, uh, but the systems are in place at the moment, but we all acknowledge they need to be improved and that's what today is about. Do you envisage that the state government will have to um, put in legislation or all the legislation to fit in with the national report? Uh, we'll, we'll look through that detail as we progress this memorandum, memorandum of understanding. This is really the early piece of that work to determine uh, what schemes might need to be changed and how we make sure this process is as streamlined as possible. So we're still really at that beginning stage, but we'll, we'll update you as we progress. Do you expect the state will need to have its own EPA up and running before it's credited by the federal government? Yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, of course, uh, we committed during the election to doing consultation on an independent environmental protection agency here in Queensland. We've completed that consultation and I look forward to updating everyone soon. Uh, of course, I acknowledge that uh, people want to see those decisions made independently. We do have an independent regulator, but we uh, have acknowledged the concerns raised and that's why we've done that consultation. So what the Uh, well, as has been mentioned, we're still in the very early stages of the proposal around a federal EPA and we still need to respond to the consultation paper of our EPA, so it's probably a bit too early for me to comment. Landowners and businesses obviously are looking at a micro level when they're asking for permission to clear maybe 1% of their property. This is obviously looking at a macro level. Um, can you just talk through the difference there and I guess the fact that biodiversity crosses boundary lines? Yeah, so this is looking at that landscapes, landscape scale. So it will look at areas where we say that simply development simply can't occur there, but we think that it can occur in a different area. It's about preserving biodiversity. Uh, of course, right now we have uh, we have a whole range of protections in place, but they're not looking at that cumulative impact. And this is really about looking at that landscape scale. So we'll of course work with all of those industries as we progress through this memorandum of, of understanding process. I think we need to sign these agreements. Yep, sorry. Boys, just to the left here in front, we can't see a thing. Sorry, thank you. Sorry. That's okay.